About two and a half million years ago, the Earth went through some drastic changes. For reasons that aren't 100% clear, the global temperature plummeted, hailing the arrival of the Ice Age. The polar ice caps extended well beyond their modern range, soaking up huge volumes of water, drying the environment, and lowering the seas by over 100 metres. In areas that weren't smothered by the ice sheets, open chilly grassland dominated most of the northern hemisphere, and some incredible animals evolved to take advantage of it. Huge herbivores like woolly mammoths and rhinos, and fierce predators like cave lions, bears and hyenas, prove that scientists can be a bit unimaginative when naming things. The majestic giant elk roamed proudly from the grand western valleys of Ireland to the glorious eastern steppes of Siberia. In the Americas, horses and camels were the favoured prey of saber-toothed cats and direwolves, while mastodons and giant sloths lived largely without opposition because, honestly, we do want to mess with one. These so-called megafauna were very successful, and they, as well as lots of other animals, took advantage of the newly formed land bridges and spread across the globe. This is why today we find animals that are closely related to one another, separated by hundreds of miles. But then something odd happened. About 10,000 years ago, the megafauna went extinct. Almost uniformly, across continents and within a few thousand years of each other, something calamitous wiped them out. So what happened? Well, the most popular theory revolves around the arrival of a new animal on the scene. Man. Modern Homo sapiens emerged from Africa about 200,000 years ago. Their handy hands and brainy brains helped them to innovate and adapt and conquer the world. They could share complex ideas with one another and create tools and clothes to help them survive in the harsh wilderness. There's compelling evidence that early humans hunted giant animals for food and materials, and this has led to what's known as the overkill theory. It suggests that as humans made their way around the globe, they slaughtered the megafauna, eventually wiping them out. Now, it's a very exciting theory, but there's a problem with it. Take Smilodon, the famous saber-toothed cat. It was physically stronger than any cat alive today and had fangs that were over 20 centimetres long. Giant sloths had razor-sharp claws and bony armour embedded in their skin. And a fully grown Colombian mammoth could have weighed as much as 10 tonnes, nearly double the weight of an African elephant. These were big, high-risk animals, and they probably weren't on the menu very often, at least not when there's more manageable prey available like bison, antelope or, um, horses. If a hunting party did bring down something as big as a mammoth, that's a huge supply of meat, and it could have kept a modestly sized tribe going for weeks. And on top of that, the human population at the time was less than a percent of what it is today. There just wasn't the demand for so many animals to go extinct. So what else could have happened? Another possibility is the spread of infectious diseases. Remember those land bridges I mentioned before? When animals migrate into new territory, they run the risk of encountering pathogens and parasites that their immune systems aren't ready for. They can also transmit their own diseases, causing chaos in the local ecosystem. But at the top of the list of suspects is ironically the one thing that allowed these animals to exist in the first place. Climate change. The temperature was rising, the barometer getting low. Hang on a minute. The temperature was rising, and this was having a huge knock-on effect for the global environment. As the ice caps thawed, all that newly melted water raised the seas and flooded the low-lying land bridges. It also put extra moisture into the atmosphere, resulting in a climate that wasn't just warmer, but wetter. The open grasslands that mammoths and so many other animals called home disappeared, and they were replaced by temperate woodland. Large mammals tend to breed quite slowly, so when drastic climate change affected their environment, they just couldn't adapt quickly enough. One by one, the huge herbivores that made the Ice Age their home died out and the mighty predators that hunted them soon followed. Interestingly, the animals that survived beyond the Ice Age weren't the super strong and well adapted, but the generalists, animals which could tolerate changes to their diet and habitat much more comfortably than their overly specialised neighbours. If humans did contribute to the demise of the megafauna, it's only because they were already on their way out, and we just pushed them over the edge. Our capacity for mass extermination wasn't fully realised until things like gunpowder, deforestation, and mass consumerism became popular. And just as it has been since the dawn of time, living things are shaped by and at the mercy of natural forces which are indiscriminate, insurmountable, and totally unforgiving. Merry Christmas, everyone!